Qala aflaha man zakkaha That successful indeed is the one who purifies this nafs You are fear for Allah, but you also fear other people? No. Walla yakshawna ahadan. Don't fear anybody else, illa Allah, except Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's telling us, good words are better. Good words, words of advice, is better than the one who gives charity, but followed by reproach. So there are different levels of test, and Allah decides who He's going to test. The first level of testing, of course, is with our own nafs. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Nahmadu, and Astain, who and Astag, Firu, who and Aoud Bilahi, and Shururi, and Fusina, and Sayati Amalina, Maya the Hilla, who fell a mother, Lella, who were Mayo the Lil Fella, Hadiella, on a shadow and La Ilaha, the law, who had the Hula, Sharikala, on a shadow and Nam, Hamad and Abdu, who were Rasulu, our Salah, who will Haki Bashira, one of the Ra, or that Yan Ilaha, he be eating he was Sirajam Munira. أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الهاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم. Begin by saying الحمد لله and all praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى our Creator. And our sustainer, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us life in this world. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for iman. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We are very close to a very important date in the Muslim calendar, which is the date of the middle of the month of Sha'aban, the 15th of Sha'aban. There are many controversies concerning the observance of this day. And we should be clear in our minds exactly what is the things that we should do, what are the things that we should do, and those things that we should not do. There are many, many ahadith, for example, many numerous ahadith that talk about the observance of the night of the 15th of Sha'aban as a night of ibadah, a night of worship. And therefore, in that night, we should spend some extra time, inshallah, in worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, performing the tahajjud salah, reciting some Quran, extra nawafil salah, doing the dhikr of Allah, and so on and so forth. There is also the issue of the, the fasting of the following day. But the hadith regarding the fasting of the 15th of Sha'aban are not, not authentic hadith to the extent that this can be considered a sunnah act of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is permissible for a person to fast on the 15th of Sha'aban, but his intention for this fast should be that he is fasting in the month of Sha'aban, or that he is fasting one of the ayah mubid, one of the white days which occur in the middle of each month, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th of the month. But the intention of fasting for the 15th of Sha'aban itself is not supported by authentic hadith of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also with regard to going to the cemetery and the grave, it is an act that is permissible in Islam. It was something that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did do. And there is a hadith in which Aisha anha reports that the Prophet wasallam left her while he thought she was asleep and he went to the graveyard of Baqi, the graveyard in Medina, and that he made the dua. And therefore it is permissible based on this hadith, but this that did not become a practice of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that every year he would go to the cemetery on this night and he would do that. And therefore we should not consider it a sunnah act that we should go 
to this cemetery on that particular night alone. But the going to the cemetery on that night is permissible and if we have that desire, we should go and make dua. And I want to speak a little bit about this because it is something that unfortunately we only allow ourselves to do this sometimes just once for the year and this day. And then if we do that, as I said, our intention should be clear that this is a permissible act, but this is not necessarily a sunnah act of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa However, the visiting of the graves is something that is very important to us as Muslims. It is something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa told us that we should do. For example, in one hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Kuntu nahaytukum an ziyaratil kubur fazuruha. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that I forbade your visiting of graves, but visit them now. In the beginning of Islam, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade the believers from going to the grave sites after the person has been buried for the sake of making this dua. But now the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this hadith has given that permission that we should go. He said, so visit them now. In another hadith he says, whosoever desires to visit the graveyard, let him do so because it reminds us of the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also speaks about going to the graveyard but in a different way in Surah Takathur. And Allah says, Al-Hakumut Takathur. That the mutual increase diverts you, meaning that as we strive in this world to gain more and more of the material things of this world, we may become distracted from the real existence for which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us, the existence of the hereafter. We become diverted sometimes so much that we forget about the duties we have to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kalla sawfa ta'alamun, thumma kalla sawfa ta'alamun. He says, Nay, you shall come to know. Again, nay, you shall come to know. But before that, he says, Hatta zurtumul maqabir, until you visit the graves. In this surah, visit the graves here doesn't mean the visit, the ziyara that we're speaking about that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to do. It means your own personal permanent visit until the day of judgment. It means your going to the graves, being put into the graves. That for some people they will be diverted from the true understanding of the life of this world until they die. And then Allah says soon you shall come to know again soon you shall come to know about the truth of the matter and the consequences of your neglect. So the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is telling us that before that time comes when we visit the graves in a permanent fashion, in other words, somebody put or people put us into the graves, let us visit the graves. Go and visit the graves and understand what is going on inside of the graves. Because if we pass by the cemetery, the cemetery, especially if you pass by one as beautifully kept as ours, you will see only a very peaceful scene. You may think that what a wonderful place this is to be, how calm and nice it is to go here. But what happens inside of the graves? What goes on inside of the graves? It is reported in, in the hadith of Ahmad, and also into in the Sahih of Bukhari and Muslim, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha relates a story where a Jewish woman used to come and she would do her some favor and the woman would say to Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, may Allah protect you from the punishment of the grave. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he, she was, she asked, he was asked by Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, what is this woman saying about the punishment of the grave? Is there punishment in the grave? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no. La, there is no punishment except on the day of judgment. And then after some time had passed, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came out of his house 
with his face reddened with a very you know somber look and the hadith records that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says Al Kabaru Kakita al Mudlim that the grave is like or the graves are like patches of dark night. Like you have some you have some places that you see there's absolutely no light and it's absolutely dark or sometimes on a dark night everything looks very dark. They are like patches of a dark night. And he says, Ayuhanas, O mankind, Law ta'lamuna ma a'lamu, la baqaytum kathiran, wa dahiktum kalila. He says, O people, if you knew what I know, you would weep much and laugh little. He says, Ayuhanas, O people, ista'idhu billahi min adhab al qabr. He said, so this is coming after he had said, no, there is no punishment in the grave. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him and showed him. And he said, if, I, if you knew what I know, if you saw what I see, you would weep a lot and laugh a little. And he said, O oh people, seek refuge with Allah from the torment of the grave. فَإِنَّ أَذَابَ الْ أَذَابَ الْقَبْرِ حَقٌ Because certainly the torment of the grave, it is real. It is a real torment. It is not something that is a fantasy. This is our belief, Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that there is punishment in the grave. And there are many other ahadith that corroborate this as well. Like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passing by the graves and telling his companions that these people in these graves, the two of them are being punished for different reasons. One because of slander when he was in the world and one because of not taking care of the way that he expelled his urine from his body so that it got on his clothing and his salah was not accepted and so on and so forth. So that the punishment of the grave, it is real. And therefore when we visit the graves and when we go on Monday night we're not going to pay homage to the people, our family members who are there. We're going to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them and relieve them and remove them from any punishment that occurs in the grave. And there are many, many ahadith that talk about that. But there are other things as well that we need to know about what goes on in the grave. For example, there is a verse in Surah 17 verse 13 where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَكُلَّ إِنسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَهُ تَعِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we have fastened every man's ta'ira to his neck. We have fastened every man's ta'ira. And ta'ira means something that flies. It means like the, the deeds that a person feels, it flies away and goes away. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we tie it Every man's deeds to his neck. And one of the Tari'een, Hassan al Basri, says that this verse means, and it is corroborated by Ibn Kathir, that the book of deeds of the person will be tied to his neck in the grave. That the book of deeds of the person will be tied to his neck in the grave. Allah says in the next part of the verse, and on the day of resurrection. We shall bring out for him a book which he will find wide open. That book that is tied and closed in the grave with him will be made wide open. And wide open means that your book of deeds is going to be available for you to read and available for everyone else to see as well. So sometimes we think that we will do things in a hidden manner and no one will ever find out. But the verse of the Quran says that on the day of judgment that book of deeds is going to be laid wide open and the tafsir of this verse is that not only are you going to be able to read it, but everybody else is going to be able to read it as well. So when we do things and we feel we hide from our parents or we hide from our jama or we hide from our students or we hide from the authorities, we are only hiding for a period of time. It will be exposed. 
And then in the next verse, Allah says, Ikra'a katabaka. The, 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 the verse of the Quran says it will be said to him, Ikra, read your book. Read your book. Kafabi nafsika al-yawm alayka hasiba. That you yourself are sufficient as a reckoner against yourself. You yourself are sufficient as a reckoner against yourself on the day of judgment. So this book of deeds, we take it with us in the grave, according to this opinion. It's tied around our necks in the grave. So when we feel that in the grave it's just a, a period of just quiet and calm until the day of judgment, we see that on top of the graves. The Prophet ﷺ alluded to the fact that if people really were to see, were to hear the punishment of some people in the graves, they wouldn't even bury their dead. They would not bury their dead, their loved ones, they would not bury them because of what they would be hearing going on in there. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, in hadith, sorry, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that a person will understand what is his situation while he is in the grave. That is why sometimes the, the Mufassirin, based on verse of the Quran, say that the grave is the beginning of the day of judgment. That your day of judgment begins in the grave. That is why Uthman, he used to pass by the graves and he used to be weeping. Weeping. When they asked him, why are you weeping so much by the graves? He recalled that the Rasul said that the graves can be a pit from the pits of Jah Jahannam or a garden from the gardens of Jannah. So the Rasul says in this hadith, Inna ahadakum idha mata urida alayhi maq'aduhu bil ghadati wal ashi in kana min ahl al jannah fa min ahl al jannah wa in kana min ahl al nar fa min ahl al nar fayaqulu hadha maq'adu maq'aduka hatta yab'athaka yab'athaka Allah azza wa jalla ilayhi yawm yawm al qiyamah rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that when one of you dies he has shown his place in paradise or in Jahannam morning and evening. Where is he shown this? He's shown this in the grave. He's shown his paradise or his Jannah or his Jahannam morning and evening. And the hadith says if he is one of the people of paradise, then he is one of the people of paradise. Meaning that if he's one of the people of Jannah, he will be shown the gardens of Jannah while in the grave. So it's not just a place to go and take a rest and sleep. He is shown morning and evening his place in Jannah. And the hadith says that if he is one of the people of Jahannam, then he is one of the people of hell. In other words, he will be shown his Jahannam morning and evening. And it will be said to him, this is your place until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects you to go to it on the day of judgment. This is the place, this is the, your place until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala resurrects you on the day of judgment. And therefore in the grave that person will already know, you will already see what is going on for him. That is why it is important as well that we go to the graves and we pray for our loved ones in the grave. Pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive them and have mercy upon them. Because we do not know what activity is going on in the grave, how that person is being treated in the grave. And that is why while we will say it is permissible to go on Monday night to the graves, it is permissible for us to go all of the time and visit them and pray for them. But when we go to the graves, what do we do? There are also etiquettes in Islam. Everything is about etiquettes. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says in one hadith that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam would stay by the grave and he would say, "Seek forgiveness for your brother. Seek forgiveness for your brother." What do we do by the grave when we go there? We ask forgiveness for that person. When 
the word brother is used, it means brother or sister or mother or father, whoever, seek forgiveness for them and supplicate for him for steadfastness. Supplicate for him for steadfastness. That we ask Allah to forgive them and we ask Allah to give them steadfastness and ability to answer the questions in the grave and to have patience in the grave. Because the Prophet says because he is being questioned about his deeds now. That he is being questioned about his deeds. In other words, when we are there burying a person and we have buried that person, what do we do? Many times people go to the graves. When the person is being buried, they're talking about cricket. They're talking about something. It's a long time I haven't met you. You are my good friend. Let's talk about some business deal while the person is being buried. If it is that we came to this cemetery to see our loved one being buried, it must be that we have some love for them. So at that time, we should be asking Allah to forgive them. Allahumma ghafir lahu warhamu. Very simple we can say. Oh Allah, have mercy upon them and forgive them. So this is what we should do. Sometimes we make that we wait and we talk and we are waiting until the dua at the grave. And this is why the scholars say, many of the scholars say, we shouldn't even do this dua anymore. While the dua is permissible, but what does it lead to? It leads to the people just waiting around, hanging around while the body is being covered, not even participating because there is great reward as well if we can are able to physically lift a shovel of dirt and put it on the grave. But people wait for this dua and they don't realize that the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us we should be making the dua. So while, while we're waiting for this dua, we should also be making our dua and asking Allah to make him steadfast when the angels come to question him. And about the grave as well, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith narrated by Jabir radiallahu ta'ala an, that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade that the graves should be plastered and made into permanent structures or used as sitting places for people or buildings should be built over them. Alhamdulillah, we don't have that here, but many times you go to a cemetery and you see that the graves of the Muslims, there are buildings, mausoleums placed over them or they, 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 they plaster the cement over them. This is not in accordance to the Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadith of Sahih Muslim, he has not allowed this. And also, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, It is much better for one of you to sit on a live coal. It is better for one of you to sit on a live coal, which will burn his clothing and get to his skin, than to sit on a grave. Hadith of Sahih Muslim. So we also should understand about the etiquette of going to the cemetery that we do not walk on the graves of the people. Sitting, of course, many people won't do that, but people do it as well. They sit on the graves or they stand on the graves watching the person being buried so they can get a better view. You're getting a better view, but you're, you're going against the hadith of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says it is better that one of you Better for one of you to sit on live coals than to sit on the grave. And by sitting on the grave, it will include standing on the grave, walking over the grave. Because these are the graves of our loved ones. And this is where they are until the day of judgment. So these are the etiquettes. Even the salah. We do not perform the salah in the graveyard facing any grave. When we're making the dua, and we're raising our hands, it is permissible to raise your hands or keep your hands to your sides in making the dua of supplication and maghfirah and forgiveness. But don't face towards the grave as though you are praying to that person. Face towards the qibla as though you are praying to Allah for whom you are, you are praying to. So these are amongst the etiquettes that we need to understand and remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that one day we ourselves are going to be in the graves as visitors until the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us as well at the end of in the part of Surah Abasa, He says, Kutilal insanu ma akfara min ayyi shayin khalaka 
من نطفة خلقه فقدره ثم السبيل يسره ثم أماته فأقبره ثم إذا شاء أنشره كلا لما يقضي ما أمره الله says قتل الإنسان ما أخفره He says woe unto mankind may mankind be cursed Allah is saying this may mankind be cursed how grateful or ungrateful is he how ungrateful is the mankind from what thing did we create him from a nutfa from a drop of sperm he Allah created him and then set him in due proportion gave him a lifespan gave him provision gave him everything then he made his path easy for him gave him guidance Allah gave him guidance gave him the, the, the guidance of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then he says then he causes him to die and puts him in the grave Allah causes him to die and puts him into the grave then when it is his will Allah's will he will resurrect him and Allah says nay but he has not done what he Allah has commanded him he is in the grave he is waiting to be resurrected on the day of judgment and Allah is saying he has not done what he has commanded him. So we have to ask ourselves before we become the permanent visitors of the grave, are we doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us? Like we are just about two weeks away from the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us to fast. Are we going to fulfill this command and fast? Or are we going to make excuses? There are those who will have excuses and Allah gives that exemption. But for many people, unfortunately, they don't fast with very small, silly excuses. But Allah says, look at how ungrateful this mankind is. We brought him out of nothing. He was just a drop of sperm. We gave him life. We gave him guidance. We put him in the grave and we will raise him up. But he has not done what Allah has commanded him. Let us not be amongst those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will count amongst those who have disobeyed him. Let us fulfill the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that when we enter into the graves, until we raise up until the day of judgment, we are going to be in peace and happiness. His face so beautiful, bestowed with grace. My heart just yearns to be like him.